Thank you for joining me. This is a five minute update from my inflation and job reports. The most recent employment report seemed rosy with 372,000 additional new jobs added. Job openings still exceeded the unemployed. Yet unfortunately, the skills of the unemployed do not match employer needs. Inflation continued to rage at a new record of 9.1%. The key takeaway here is that while wages grew, they grew slower than inflation. The chart here compares inflation, the blue line, with wage growth, the orange line. The gap between the two lines continues to widen. And the gray line on the chart shows that the inflation adjusted wage growth is more and more negative. So despite the strong economy, workers on average are losing more and more purchasing power. There is an encouraging sign on the inflation front. Both crude oil prices and gasoline prices have recently begun to drop. Here we see a chart of the oil price drop. This should reduce inflationary pressures during the month of July 2022. However, supply chain issues still are unresolved. Pent up demand cannot be net. For example, after being cooped up for a long time, many are willing to pay record high plane ticket prices and still suffer cancellation and delays as there are not enough pilots and others to staff the planes. Despite all the new job opportunities and the strong economy, Consumer confidence is sharply dropping as seen by this chart. The business press is flooded with talk of a future recession. Certainly the Fed has no excuse to ease with both the hot jobs and the hot inflation reports. To date, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell's stock's tough. But since I last talked to you, the target Fed fund rate has jumped from 100 basis point to 175 basis points, but inflation continues to rage. Many pundits complain that the economy can't sustain such a high rate. Yet the Fed tightening is not doing what it's supposed to do. Loans should drop after Fed tightening, but credit card loans are at an all time high as many folks are trying to satisfy a lot of pet up demand. We still have 25 million prime age working folk who are not gainfully employed. It is necessary for them to get into the workforce if our supply side issues are to be resolved. They need better skills that do not require a college education. An example of such skills are appliance repair, electronics, healthcare, airline staffing, and many others. Many of you ask me, how can these unemployed support themselves? Perhaps some are earning cash in the underground economy, such as narcotic drugs, gambling, theft, and prostitution, and the underground economy can't be measured. So we don't, we can't measure this. Maybe others are still living in their parents' basement. The slack is being taken up by some retirees who have found that after inflation and the sudden drop in their retirement plans, that retirement is no longer affordable. But this is not a sustainable solution. Many of you tell me that we need to pay our workers more, and I completely agree. Many employees, such as the financial sector, have seen generous pay increases because employers could pass on the additional cost to their customers. But this is not true of every business. Generally, if productivity equals or exceeds wage increases, then employers can increase pay without the need to raise prices. But this last chart shows that productivity is far below current wage increases. This does not bode well for workers to get properly compensated without igniting a wage price spiral. Yet, whatever happens, we have always muddled through 
and we will probably muddle through again. Thank you for joining me.